Assalamualaikum and hi everyone Jadi sesi kali ini kita akan lihat Presentation para pelajar yang akan berkongsi ilmu Bersama kawan-kawan Bagi persediaan menghadapi final exam yang bakal tiba Dalam sesi dari kita untuk kita Jom kita tengok You are with me, Amalin, to explain the subtopic gravitation 7.2 Gravitational the potential the energy of gravitational potential energy or the symbol is U. Gravitational potential energy can be defined as the work done by the gravitational force to bring a test mass from infinity to a point. Let's look at the diagram shown here. So this is the point, the, the point P, and this is the body mass at the infinity point. I'll explain that more later, but for now, the unit for gravitational potential energy is joule or can be written as J. Okay, the diagram here, we can see that at point P, uh, we can have an equation which is the W equal uh, with the work done equal to negative G mass of uh, times mass mass of the earth times mass of the body mass divided by R radius of the earth. This work done equation also can be as gravitational potential energy which is U. So next the Next equation is delta U, which is changes of gravitational potential energy, equals to M, mass of body mass, times G, which is the 9.81, times height. Now, you must be wondering why we have negative sign here. Well, actually, the negative sign indicates that the gravitational potential energy of the body mass occurs on the surface of Earth, which is less than the inf at the infinity point.
Now that we know already the basics, let's get into the examples. First example, a rocket with mass 5.3 exponent 3 kg is launched from the equator. What is the gravitational potential energy of the rocket? The question already gives the mass of the Earth, which is 5.9 e exponent 24, which also can be as 6 exponent 24. You know, it's easier if you point out the input given, so it's easier for us to know what we gonna use in the equation, in the jalan kerja. Do you still remember the equation that we saw at the previous slide? Yes, u equal to negative, don't forget the negative, g mass of the earth times mass of the body mass divided by r, radius of the earth. Now, the question is quite straightforward, so we can just substitute all the uh, value given into the equation. Remember, for the mass of the earth, you also can use 6 exponent 24, especially if your lecture has a preference Listen to your lecture, okay? And now we have the answer. It's quite easy for the first example. But guys, don't forget the unit joule and the negative sign. Now let's get into the second example. A rocket is launched straight up from the Earth's surface. It reaches a maximum height at about 4 times the radius of Earth. Calculate the initial velocity of the rocket. So, this question applies the principle of conservation energy, where the equation will be delta Ke equal to delta U. To see this question clearer, I draw the diagram. The rocket when it is on the Earth's surface, there will be kinetic energy because the rocket um not moving yet. So there will be a velocity at on the Earth's surface. However, at the infinity point, there is no velocity because there is no kinetic energy. Now, because we don't have kinetic energy at the infinity point, so we only have 1 over 2 mv squared at the left hand side and equal to uh, u final minus u initial. Substitute the u with negative g m m divided by R. Don't forget that uh, the U each is final and initial. Don't get confused. Notice that the question don't give us the mass of the body mass. So, the good news is, we can just cancel out the M of the rocket. However, we still don't have mass of the Earth. So, let's do this. You still remember we have the equation which is A equal to G mass times mass of the Earth divided by R squared. 
this A can be as G equal to G mass of the Earth divided by R of radius of the Earth squared. So, the question gives us the G of the Earth. So, kita jadikan the uh, mass of the Earth as subject as well as D because we don't have the mass of the Earth. So, the equation will be like this. And we can just continue at the previous stellar culture. The negative, negative here can be positive. So, we put the initial one at the front. Be careful with the initial and final thing. Minus G mass times mass of the Earth divided by R final. You see now that we can substitute the G M mass of the Earth with G radius of the Earth squared that we uh, did just now. R final here is radius of the earth plus the height of where the rocket moves. So it will be, it will be 5 times radius of earth. Now we can factorize the right hand side to be G times radius of the earth in bracket 1 minus 1 over 5. So we'll get 4 over 5 times G times radius of the earth. Now we already get into it, we can just uh, substitute the value we have. Two here can be moved to the right hand side. With the answer we have right now, we have to square root it to get the V. You can also write the velocity, the answer, in like this. Divided it by 1000, 
So, we'll get 10 km per second. So, that's how we get the answer for the second example. Yay! Let's go! It's the last example. An astronaut has a total mass of 110 kg. On the moon, he climbs into his spacecraft 5 meters up the ladder. His GPE increased by 880 joules. What is the gravitational strength at the moon? So, for this question, we can use um, the equation which is delta u equal to mgh. And we can just substitute delta u, m, and h because g is what we are searching for. And now we have the gravitational strength at the moon, which is 1.6. Don't forget the unit, Newton per kg. Hi, I'm Darren Mahavir from SM5P4. And today I'm going to discuss about chapter 7.3. Satellite motion in a circular orbit. The learning outcomes of this subtopic is we should able to derive and use escape velocity and we should able to derive and use equation for satellite motion to find the velocity of the satellite and the period for one revolution. So what is escape velocity? Escape velocity defined as minimum velocity required by a mass to escape completely from gravitational field to infinity in outer space. So Referring to this diagram, the mass is the rocket. So how the rocket can go to the outer space? Simple, it has overcome the gravitational field. So the speed when the rocket overcomes the gravitational field is called as the escape velocity. So consider a rocket is going to the moon, which is in the outer space. It should overcome the gravitational field okay this is the gravitational field okay so how to find the escape velocity so simple we should apply the principle of conversation of energy where it tells us that the total energy in initial is always equals the total energy in final okay when we proceed there's two energy which is kinetic energy and potential energy so we see that the total energy in final is equal to zero why? As we know, the space, it has no gravity and no moving molecules. So the potential energy is zero. How about the kinetic energy? So it's logic that the rocket moves a little bit in the outer space. But we assume the kinetic energy is equal to zero because the value is so near to the zero. So 
the incertitude is brought 1 and 2 mv squared plus the potential energy is equal to 0. So when we express v escape velocity, we get escape velocity is equals to square root of 2 gm over r, where v e is equal to escape velocity and r is equal to distance between the test mass and earth's center. So the notes here is important where we should memorize before doing any calculations. So how to find the escape velocity if the test mass is located on the earth's surface? Simple, just substitute the r equals to capital R. So we'll get escape velocity equals to square root of 2 gm over capital R. From the previous subtopic, we learned that the gm equals to gr square. So if we substitute the gm equals to gr square, we can cancel out a r in the denominator and there will be only one r left in the numerator. Finally, we will get escape velocity equals to square root of 2 gr where g is equal to the gravitational acceleration which is 9.81 meter per second square and r equals to earth's radius. Next is tangential velocity and period. Consider a satellite of mass traveling around the earth of mass radius in a circular orbit of radius with constant tangential speed. So the centripetal force is contributed by the gravitational force of attraction exerted on the satellite by the earth. It means that two forces were acting on the satellite. Remember this, the satellite can only move or orbits in its own path when the Fg is equal to Fc, where the force of gravity is equal to the centripetal force. So, if the centripetal force is higher than force of gravity, the satellite will move to the outer space. While, when the force of gravity is higher than the centripetal force, the satellite will move into the planet and crash. Okay, as we know Fg equals to Fc, we substitute all the equations. So, we can cancel out the m1 which is the test mass, the mass of the satellite, and we get v squared equals to g m over r. So, if you want to get the value of g, we need to square root the equation in the right hand side. So, we will get v equals to square root of g m over r. g is universal uh, gravitational constant. m is mass of earth where the r is radius between satellite and the center of the earth. Next, how to find the period of the satellite to do one revolution? First, we need to find the relationship between tangential velocity and angular velocity. Tangential or linear velocity v equals to omega r. We need to express omega, so we will get omega equals to v over r. In angular velocity, we know that omega equals to 2 pi over t. So after combining these two formulas, we will get a new one, which is v equals to 2 pi r over t. So v equals to 2 pi r over t also equals to square root of g m over r. So substitute v equals to 2 pi r over t. So, we need to express t, which is the period for the satellite to do one revolution. We will get t equals to 2 pi square root of r cube over gm. Okay, let's have a look on the questions. First question, in order to leave the moon, the Apollo astronaut had to take off in the lunar mobile and reach the escape velocity of the moon. The radius of the moon is 1.74 times 10 power of 6 meter. And the mass of the moon is 0 0.35 times 10 power of 32 kg. Calculate the velocity which the polar astronaut have to reach in order to leave the moon. First, list down all the information they given in the question. Radius equals to 1.74 times 10 power of 6 meter, and mass equals to 0 0.35 times 10 power of 32 kg. Next, written down the gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth. Okay. What's the question 1? It says that calculate the velocity which the Apollo astronauts have to reach in order to leave the moon. So first we need to return down the formula for escape velocity which is V e equals to square root of 2 g m over r. We know what is the g, you know which is the m which is mass and we know what is the r radius. So simply substitute the values so you will get escape velocity equals to 2374 meter per second. 
Therefore, the escape velocity from the moon is 2374 meter per second or you can return as 2.37 kilometer per second but it is advisable to leave the answer in the SI unit. Next is the second question. A satellite moves in a circular orbit around the Earth at a speed of 5 times 10 power of 3 meter per second. Calculate the satellite's attitude above the surface of the Earth. So, as usual, we need to list down all the information that they given in the question. Next, it is advisable to you to write down the gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth also. Okay, the question asks the satellite's altitude. Okay, referring to the diagram, the altitude is h which is the length between the surface of the earth and the satellite first we need to find the r because they give the velocity of the satellite so we need to find r by using the formula v equals to square root of gm over r so substitute everything into the formula so we will get r equals to 1.6 times 10 power of 7 meter okay referring to the diagram r equals to h plus r where the capital r is equal to the radius of the earth so h which is the satellite's altitude equals to r minus capital r so r which is 1.59 times 10 power of 7 should be subtracted with radius of the earth which is 6.4 times 10 power of 6 meter you will get the satellite's altitude which is h equals to 9.6 times 10 power of 6 meter Okay, next is the third question. A satellite is orbiting at a height of 596 km above the Earth's surface. Calculate its speed and the period of evolution in the orbit. As usual, first we need to list down all the information that is given in the question. So it's clear that the question has given us the satellite's altitude, which is h equal to 596 km, and as we convert it to the SI unit meter, we will get 596,000 meter. So, it's also important for us to write down the gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth. The question asks to find the speed and the period of evolution in the orbit. So, first written down the formula for speed, V equals to square root of gm over r. We have the value of g and the value of m. So, how to find the value of r? It's simple. Just at the satellite altitude with the radius of the earth where r equals to 59,600 plus 6.4 times 10 power of 6 which is equals to 6.98 times 10 power of 6 meter so simply substitute you will get the velocity of the satellite which is 7.57 times 10 power of 3 meter per second so next is the period of in the orbit so apply the formula t equals to 2 pi square root of r cube over gm okay we have everything here just simple substitute we will get 5791.9 seconds so that's all for me i hope you understand this topic very well thank you